back with another video and this time uh, it's going to be about mesh tastic. Uh, we're going to we're going to do we're going to do something a little bit different and what's interesting it was actually mentioned on social media maybe a month ago it was kind of almost a joke about um, having GNU radio like a GR mesh tastic. And uh, yeah, so here we are a little while later fast forward and so someone has actually got uh, Meshtastic, uh, well, the ability to receive Meshtastic with GNU Radio. And I'm sure I don't have to do a huge explanation. A lot of you probably already know what Meshtastic is. I've got the page pulled up here for just that really quick um, definition there, open source, off-grid, decentralized mesh network. And there's a lot of equipment out there uh, that run it. Uh, I, I was going to save it for later, but uh, what I have in front of me here is the Canary One, and, and we're going to use this as part of the uh, the demonstration here. And um, been testing it uh, for a while now. Was uh, out doing distance tests and uh, really happy with it. It was uh, provided to me. So, uh, but the comments that I'm making right now are just my own opinion. And uh, anyway, so. If I have any difficulty decoding uh, Meshtastic, it's nothing to do with uh, this radio. It's probably one of uh, my uh, not super in-depth knowledge on the, the flow graph yet and all the settings, the environment, the power, uh, receive, antennas, lots of different things uh, when it comes to uh, running this with a software-defined radio. So I'm just pointing that out now. Uh, anyways, I'm going to jump right into the project page. So the Meshtastic SDR, it uh, says it aims to be a full transceiver stack for both receiving and transmitting Meshtastic. Again, I'm just going to use receive in this particular video. And I'm doing this on a War Dragon, which I try to include everything by default already. But uh, I, I think we'll try and run through as though we're just using like Dragon OS uh, whether it's on a Pi or a desktop uh, that you can download and, and get up and running so there's just a couple things I want to point out to get this going we'll of course clone this repository down uh, Dragon OS already has a GNU radio and, and plugins and everything else but we're gonna do something a little bit different when we install uh, Meshtastic and I'll, I'll explain why but uh, let's see We'll open up terminal here and by default I'll probably have Meshtastic SDR on the War Dragon under War Dragon. You can see there is some applications additional that I put there uh, to include Meshtastic uh, via a, a Python uh, virtual environment. But let's let's get clone this down. And also, we're going to do a, let me think about this for a second, we're going to do a Python 3 tech MVNV, and I'm just going to, I won't hide it or anything or, or whatever. You can put this virtual environment anywhere. Actually, you know what, since I've already uh, get cloned down the Meshtastic Python uh, API, and we can even do a git pull just to make sure uh, let's see I, actually sorry I already have that's right I already have a virtual environment on the war dragon so let's let's do it as though we we don't Python 3 tack M V N V V N V we'll just do that should make a virtual Python virtual environment for us And so if we source V A N V um, bin activate, you should see that you're in a virtual environment here. And then within here, we'll install Meshtastic. Reason why I did that is because Meshtastic needs a newer uh, proto buff. Where is it at? Like a 5.127. But Dragon OS already has protobuf 
something from the package manager, which is something that Kismet currently needs for the Python capture tool. So if you go and you install Protobuf outside of a virtual environment on Dragon OS, probably even other things, I, I guess, as well, uh, you, could, you could end up messing up that dependency elsewhere. So I'm, that's why I'm just using a virtual environment. So we should be able to uh, run a portion of this Meshtastic SDR that we're going to need to do, but we'll run it from within a virtual environment. So I'm going to put that over there for right now, and we'll use another uh, window here. Let's see. Where did I just where did I just download that? So ah, there we go. Meshtastic SDR, and we're gonna look in GNU Radio Scripts RX, and I have a let's see, I have an RTL SDR version three plugged in, and I know that I have the Meshtastic set up uh, default on the 250 kilohertz uh, preset on long fast with the default key and let's see I'm actually gonna turn the canary one on and while that's booting up I want to point out a couple other things that's pretty uh, interesting about this Meshtastic SDR project you can see uh, we're the endpoints are going to point to a ZMQ um, pub sync so that you can subscribe to that with the Python application I'm going to show you here in a second in order to decode the messages from the GNU radio flow graph. And that, that's, that's significant here in a second and I'll show you what it, it talks about. But it also accepts the optional AES key. Uh, or, well, a key override, but by default, I just leave the AQ uh, equals equals, which is what Meshtastic is set by default. So, so this isn't doing anything to Meshtastic other than attempting to act just as a, a device, just as a Meshtastic device. So, you know, you still need, need the encryption, you still need the settings, but where an SDR really shines is the fact that, so, the flow graph you'll see here in a second has ports that are set up for short, fast, medium, fast, slow, long, long, slow, very slow. So what's significant about that? Well, you can look at all the presets simultaneously with an SDR. Well, depending on your bandwidth and uh, the CPU uh, compute power that you have to throw at this. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's that's pretty interesting. And then I thought this was kind of interesting, too, talking about RX lore on non-standard frequencies like amateur radio bands so that that's pretty interesting being able to do that with an SDR of course depending on when and if the TX flow graph is done uh, by this particular person that is doing this project I assume Josh Conway so okay let's jump to actually opening up a flow graph so GNU radio companion Meshtastic US will do 250 kilohertz RTL SDR. So note we are going to use, like I said, that RTL SDR version 3, uh, but this can work with other SDRs as well. There's some presets for uh, HackRF. The Meshtastic US all presets I was uh, messing around with is set up for the HackRF. Uh, not really concerned about this uh, throttle block. I'll just go ahead and delete that it should be fine uh, it is going to a sync yeah it should be fine so RTL SDR source it's on 906.875 uh, let's see what else we can see our flow graphs here coming into the frame sync FFT demod header decode so on and so forth out to our pub sync I really only care about the long fast one right now so on uh, this particular port that you see in the bottom right here. I'm going to turn on just I just want to see some activity so I'm going to print I'm going to turn header on and what else and actually you know what I'm going to just for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to 
disable the rest uh, that I don't really care about right now. All right, that should be good. And I may have to play with gain and, and some other settings here, but uh, we'll see how this goes. So should be set up. And then what we want to do is over on the window uh, where we're in our virtual environment, we'll also go to the MeshTastic SDR directory. And you should see Python scripts, and we'll do Python 3 meshtastic. I just want to see. Mm, okay, let's see. Python, or uh, let's see. pip 3 install. I'm trying to remember. ZMQ. Is there a requirements thing? No. So pip3 install. <laughs> okay. It may say, let's see, install meshtastic. So it doesn't necessarily call out those ad additional packages. Maybe it does somewhere and I'm just missing it. But anyways, we should be set up now. So Python 3, this is the decoder. Let's see, and we're going to do N, I, I'm thinking we should be able to, let's see, one, two, one dash port two zero four, and actually just, just in case, since we're doing this all in the same box, one twenty seven nine zero one. So you, you're looking for activity here in the bottom left. The other thing, you know what we can do too? Just so you can visualize this, let's right after the RTL SDR. Six, let's see, and we'll do reference the center frequency here. Let's see what we get. <laughs> okay, so we've got our waterfall. We have our decoder running. Okay. What I'm looking for is some header information um, to print out in the bottom left here. And um, so probably uh, because there's GPS in here, uh, up, you know, there might be some information like blurred out. Um, but I have the mesh tastic up and running, and what I'm going to do is is uh, connect to it with uh, Bluetooth, the mesh tastic app, and have it send a message to the long fast channel.
Okay. All right, here we go. So connect and we're going to send a message. So there we go. Wow, that actually uh, worked amazing this time. So uh, so there it, it, it decodes. So the RTL SDR received the meshtastic message, which I just sent a test message with that uh, default AES key of uh, test, and so it's it's try it's it's trying to resend it a couple times because there's there's nobody I'm sending it to, I'm just sending it over the air, and then the RTL SDR is uh, receiving that. So let's try it one more time. There we go. So. I just sent a different message. I got a header checksum valid, and then uh, so it's it's waiting to be acknowledged and resending. Uh, yeah, there we go. So if, you know, invalid protobuf probably still being worked on, but it is successfully decoding the mesh ta mesh. Oh gosh, currently decoding the mesh tastic messages on long fast and yes I only have one uh, you know chain of the of the, uh, the the flow graph running but I could run I could want run more I just wanted to focus on this so it's actually working amazing this time uh, without really any issues I do have an uh, some attenuation on the uh, uh, mesh tastic device that canary one just because I don't I don't want a whole bunch of like power right next to the SDR. So anyways, I'm I'm actually really shocked. I spent probably I don't even know 3 4 hours on this um the other day with uh, not really getting a uh, clean um reception and stuff, I guess. I don't know. I I must have changed I must have changed something here. Uh, so all right. Well, there's I'm sure lots more that could be done with this. Um you know, please understand if you had wider bandwidth, if you had all of the presets up and, and going, you could theoretically uh, receive um, Meshtastic simultaneous from all different uh, presets. Whereas with, you know, the Meshtastic hardware that you normally have, you're looking at, hey, I'm either set to long fast, short, you know, whatever it may be. This with an SDR, it's the beauty of an SDR. Now you can set it up and just like be receiving all of it. Okay. All right. Well, that was pretty relaxing. I'm glad it worked out uh, good. I hope I didn't miss anything. And I uh, just want to thank the Meshtastic people for uh, just the amazing stuff that they do just with Meshtastic in general. I think it's really cool. And then, of course, for the Canary One, uh, the Canary uh, radio here. Uh, appreciate that being uh, sent over. And, and then also the uh, RTL SDR uh, for being such a just a just a all around uh, great SDR that it just never seems to end what it could be used uh, for. So, all right, thanks.